Oh, arise now, ye gamers, ye game who not yet live. <laughs> Welcome to episode something of Game Guys Advance. Today we're joined by Bad Bones Richard, the vegan and the <laughs> dark lore daddy of Square Table Gaming, Zach, <laughs> which is a guest. Hey, Zach, thank you for joining us today. Hey, I'm incredibly happy to be here. <laughs> You crushed and, uh, that, by the way, James. That was great. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Did you, uh, <laughs> uh, if you guys have any complaints about your fantasy names, you will have to take them up with my manager. No, I think you got it right. Yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> I almost threw up typing Bad Bones Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, we have no idea what episode this is, but we have a guest with us. Um, Zach, your square table gaming Elden Ring lore videos are buck wild and we figured going into the goatee season this year goatee means game of the something uh we're <laughs> we're trying to get a little bit of a, a retrospective here on Elden Ring because it sort of feels like Elden Ring is just going to be the number one game of everyone's game of the year list and maybe we can trash talk it to a number two spot is that why you guys are all here <laughs> yeah I, I don't know i thought it would be kind of cool like we're six months removed from this thing mm -hmm. um and to just do like a really early retrospective like try to zoom out and um try to like think about how this thing impacted this year honestly i think now's the time to do it like this thing there's so much information that keeps getting leaked because they're updating things for the DLC. And honestly, none of it really tells us anything. So this is the time to go back and talk about it pre-DLC. Which is funny. I feel like the fact that they're... We'll probably have to you know, pick your brain on some of these leaks here. But the fact that their leaks are cryptic and like that's kind of the entire structure of the game... Yeah, I it's sort of uh, <laughs> like how the lore is going to bleed out even through leaks... Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> they're they're clearly trolling us. Man, so this Oh god, when did this game come out? My March? son was born. Like I, <laughs> immediately. Yeah, what's your son's birthday? February February eleventh. Sounds about right. <laughs> so it was around then. Yeah. But like I played this entire game with a sleeping kid on my chest. That's the best so. way to play. That's how I got through uh, Resident Evil 3. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, that sounds like a scarier game to <laughs> try and have a kid sleep through. Oh no, I had... I, oh man, I'm set up. I got the Pulse 3D headset. She didn't hear a thing. She just passed out on me. <laughs> didn't matter. <laughs> oh wow, I don't know why I didn't use a headset. I, literally, I just like, <laughs> kept my TV as quiet as possible, so I might have like a skewed memory on some of like the the bangers in the various boss fights mm -hmm. any oh, uh man. standouts any standouts for music or boss fights or boss bangers boss bangers well, yeah. i'm just gonna go off like of boss fights if you just want to start off with like best fights in the game yeah hit uh, me with it i think it, it's gotta be it's gotta be general radon right or that big moose you like the big moose <laughs> You guys know the big moose. Oh, hey, Zach, who's the big moose? Oh, yes. This is going to be the best part of having you here. Yeah. Okay, so have not done a ton of research into the big moose, but I can tell you it is uh, an ancient deity that the people, like the the like tribal people of the underground worshipped. It was more like a yeah. nature spirit. Um, where that fits in the overall lands between, not totally sure. We need to look into it more, but that is generally what it is. Oh my goodness. This is so tight because James and I we're the types to be like, um, yeah, like the the old grandma who's like kind of scary. You know him? Yeah. You know the huge puppy? The <laughs> There's huge like puppy twelve monster? of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think half of the Elden Ring enemies are just weird grandmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah, what was your uh so what was your favorite boss fight in this whole game? We won't get into characters yet, but just like mechanics and fight wise. How how uh what do you throw at your number one fight here, Zach? My number one fight? Oh, man. Um, okay, so, like, if we're talking my most exciting fight, that was just running into patches in the in his little, mm. 
in his little cave. I was so psyched that I got to run into Patches and he immediately attacked me. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're doing this. Um, <laughs> but like boss battle. Mm hmm. That's tough because like when we played it, when we played it originally, it was pre patches and everything. I think I'd have to go with um, Morgot. Is that so? Oh boy, I love love all the names George R. R. Martin <laughs> picked for everyone. Um, is Morgot the first time you run into him, or is that like so base that's of the Erd Tree fight? That's Margit the Fell Omen. The base of the Erd Tree fight is Morgot. Same dude. Margit is his projection that he uses to essentially, essentially test tarnished. <laughs> to crush the noobs. Exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, what about you, Richie? Um, I, I keep going back to Queen Renala just because of, um, honestly, just the aesthetics of it. Like, walking into this huge library and there's a bunch of, like, fucked up kids, like, biting at your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> Do I hate them. And uh, the thing I keep going back to is um, when you go to the OST, you go to like the Queen Renala track, it's like really consonant and like beautifully written. But when the kids sing in a different key, it suddenly becomes like a really fucked up song. And I feel like Elden Ring keeps playing with that in like the contrast between like um, things that are like traditionally beautiful versus the ugly. <laughs> I think that boss fight kind of um, like summed all that up for me. I think my yeah. favorite thing about that boss fight was figuring out later on that the Renala in the second phase is not Renala. Oh, interesting. Can you go into detail? Because I don't know anything about that. <laughs> okay. Are you allowed to reveal this? <laughs> this might be content. <laughs> this is all. This is all. It's there. Don't worry about it. So the Renala that you fight in the second phase isn't the Renala you fought in the first phase. In the first phase, that's like the current world Renala, who's all messed up by the Amber Egg. And she's got the like, creepy children around her who are all people who were reborn over and over and over again to keep them from dying. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The Renala in the second phase is a projection of Renala as she was before Radon, or not before Radon, before she had the Amber Egg, before Radagon gave it to her, and it's created by Ronnie the Witch. So when that other voice comes on and tells you, like, you're going to face Renala, that's Ronnie. It's like a failsafe she set up to protect her mother. Okay. I do remember in the dialogue, she says that she's Ranny, and I was like, that's not your name. No. <laughs> that, make, that makes sense. <laughs> so, like, that, that whole second sense. phase boss fight is like, just showing you not only how strong Renala was in her prime, but how strong Ronnie is that she could create this perfect copy of her mother to fight in her yeah. stead. That, that that whole area honestly got to me. Like, um, when this thing released, I I got I was like obsessed with finding like videos of other people playing this game and come across uh what I, what I'm calling like holy shit moments. Like when you first go up the elevator into um. Hey Zach, what's that? What's the area called where Renala is? It's the, the Academy, Academy of Raya yes. Lucaria. Yeah, yeah, it's the Lucaria. Academy That's Library. Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. No, right. no, you're right. Raya Lucaria. Oh, <laughs> okay. okay. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. <laughs> like I, I would watch videos of different YouTubers, like just come across that moment and like just watch their reaction. And I feel like this game is full of these holy shit moments. Do any come to mind for either of you guys, off the top of your head? The Halleck tree, man, walking into Melania's boss room. Yeah. Well, and that's such like a, a specific place to find. I think plenty of people probably just don't go there, right? Like the Halleck tree is an optional area. Mm -hmm. it, it It's totally optional. Funny story. Um, we I believe that we were actually the first channel to have a full playthrough of the game, all bosses, everything beaten. Uh, my younger brother, Jesse, was the one who streamed mm -hmm. the whole thing. He, for the most part, found everything on his own because he was streaming like day one, minute one. He found his way to the Halleck tree and watching him do that fight was like, holy shit, this is incredible. Did he win? <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> After 30 tries. That, that was the only boss I had remaining when uh, we, we had some friends over and we just kind of passed the controller around. But they had to all use my build, which is a jumping dual greatsword build oh so, yes <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty like you don't have to be very uh intelligent to use that build it's very like caveman big stick hit boss overhead so you could just we were just passing the controller around and so i was not the person to beat melania somebody That's else okay. did it, but i hey i was there 
I mean, hey, the, the, the skill, like the skill level on Melania has just gone up and up and up because originally we could just spam our, or well, not spam, but you could summon the, um, the mimic tier, and just have it pull That's, aggro the whole time, and it was crazy powerful. But now it's nerfed, so you have to actually, you have to get good to fight Melania now. Oh, the the mimic tier was actually like, I didn't get that until it was already nerfed, and it was still oh. like a huge help for me, especially because um. The way I had my, I had like the, you know, the two berserk great swords, like the gut swords, and I had frost on the one and bleed on the other. So my mimic tier was just building up all these like frost stacks and, and bleedy stacks on, uh, on the bosses. So, uh, it kind of still did like everything I needed it to do. That's fantastic. That's a smart build. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but in terms of like, oh, beans moments in the games. Yeah, I mean, I think running into the academy is definitely one of them. But I, I want to say when you get to the the capital and there's that just that huge like dragon that's in like a stasis or stone or something, just kind of arched over the city. Yeah, that boy but, huge. Yeah, that was another like thing that I again just kept like looking for people's reactions to, because yeah, I mean everything's just like bathed in gold. It's like pretty incredible to stumble upon that. Yeah, it was kind of the same, like, when Resident Evil 8 dropped, I was kind of just scouring the internet, looking for people running into the big baby in, yeah. <laughs> in the dollhouse. I, I did that a lot with Elden Ring. Yeah. Um, if, if I had to shout out another moment like this, mm -hmm. when you go back to the round table and someone, like, turns the lights out. Uh, oh, Ensha. Ensha. Yeah. Um, that was, like, so stunning. I, I mean... They did what they kind of did in Bloodborne, which is they take this area that you associate with safety and set the church on fire, essentially. <laughs> and I don't know, to pull that rug out from under you was terrifying. Yeah, it's such a, a soul's move to just remove the only safe place you get. Yeah, I actually I love that fight, but it was very easy when I ran into it because I think that only happens after you get half the Hallow Tree medallion. And I didn't do that until way late. So, like, Ensha attacked me, and I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? And then I immediately murdered him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, like, uh, same thing, because I, was, I wasn't getting the Halley Tree stuff until much later in the game when I already had my, my super build. So, like, the fact that somebody was in the round table, I just jumped and hit them, and they died. So I didn't even catch the name. Yeah. <laughs> hit first, yeah, ask questions later. Yeah. Beware of Edge, Lord. <laughs> try finger but no <laughs> oh man <laughs> no man i wait what do you think what has this game done to the rest of the video games i know that's a that's like a big stupid question but you know how when breath of the wild came out basically every game going forward was now either compared to breath of the wild or considered like a breath of the wild like just because there was a stamina bar when climbing looking yeah. at you genshin impact but what do you think <laughs> Elden Ring has... Do you think Elden Ring has ruined games? Or are we going to get a lot of games trying to do this? Yeah, I, I actually have an answer for this. My, oh, my, like, my big thesis for Dark Souls in general is that it ruined my ability to enjoy other video games. And I think Elden Ring ruined my ability to enjoy Dark Souls. Whoa. Now listen. <laughs> what I mean by this, um, basically after I got into Souls Lakes... I found it difficult to play a traditional AAA like action adventure game. Um, I found that like it didn't respect me enough and held my hand all the way through when really I just wanted to be like thrown into the deep end. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when Elden Ring dropped, the dual side of this coin unfortunately was Horizon, and like I, I don't have anything against that game, but um, the people would compare the UIs essentially uh, <laughs> what's visible on the screen while you play. Is it helpful? Is it screen clutter? Um, and man, Elden Ring is just like the best version of almost like UI minimalism. Even if you look at the maps, like a, a lot of these like Assassin's Creed type maps, um, they provide a lot of answers. I think there's icons for everything and places are easily identifiable, but I think Elden, Elden Ring's map, like more so like asked questions where you would kind of like look at your map and see 
what looks like a structure and the player has to ask like, oh, what is that? I need to go check that out as opposed to like just finding a solution from the map. I I figured out very late in the game how to properly use the map because there mm. are things you can see on there that tell you like, hey, this this is a cave, but it's 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 integrated into the map in such a natural way that you don't realize it while looking. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Uh, and I think that goes to show that like with Assassin's Creed and, you know, Horizon again, no shade to the games, but their maps are big for big sake. So they put all these icons on there to like, hey, we have we've got candy over here as where Elden Ring, I think, is the result of actual good map design where almost the environment is leading your eye. So yeah. You're just following, you know, sure the the little uh the graces they kind of point in a general direction of like, hey, there's a big bad kind of in that direction. But just naturally walking, you'll probably end up at um oh boy, is it castle castle Lim Limgrave? Where's oh, that? Yeah. yeah, like it the game just kinda of leads you there without really having to, you know, put big billboards. It's not like that that picture that was going around when Elden Ring dropped, it's like, I don't know, it's like part of like I-95 with like a McDonald's logo and like also Castle Limgrave in the background. And like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a very uh, busy scene compared to um, a lot of, just a lot of other open world games that are telling you way too much. Yeah. And there wasn't like an NPC that was like, hey, let's go to Limgrave. It, it's like they whisper like a cryptic poem at you and you're like, oh shit, what do I do with this information? Oh yeah, that guy. He just calls you maidenless when you. <laughs> yeah, Vari's the worst. What happens to that guy? Oh, you kill him. You can kill him. You can kill him real good. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, in like the blood area, right? Yeah, in in the Mogwin Dynasty, uh, in the in the caves. If you do all of his quest line, you can invade his world, which is just so great. He's like teaching you to invade and murder people in the name of Moog, and then like you can invade his world and just take him down. And you get his weapon, which is like a bouquet of roses, which I thought was really cool. But unfortunately, yeah. it wasn't like strong enough for my bleed build. <laughs> oh, so um, uh, like when we were talking about the map, um, one of the things I actually love about it is that it kind of punishes you for just following Grace and going in mm. the quote unquote right direction. Like if yes. you just yeah, if you just follow Grace and try to take on these enemies, you're going to get ruined. You need to explore. And yeah, that that was the other smart thing that this game just did in general, is it provided a lot of walls for you to get around. And you usually can't just like keep smashing your head at the wall until it breaks. You have to um find like better tools for it. You have to go around. Yeah, I honestly, I kind of forgot about that because I did sort of just follow the beaten path to start off. I'm like, all right, well, there's a big castle over there. I'm going to go there. Then I get my ass beat. So I just turned right around and walked the other way. And yeah. going to the south of the map, I found the big anchor in one of the caves. It was like a big rusty anchor as a weapon. And for some reason, that just like fit my play style very well. And getting new weapons and new armor and stuff, I walked back. And I did fine, or at least much better than I did, like, <laughs> right as a new character. Yeah. Did you also get the, um, did you go to, like, Castle Moor, Castle Morn? No, mm -hmm. actually, I honestly missed that place, though, for a oh. while, because I did not get the grafted great sword for, like, a bit. Okay, okay. Okay, so um, you had to, like, you had to go back and do Hyetta's quest all, like, out of order, since you didn't do Castle Morn at the beginning. Yeah, I sort of just went, like, I explored to find something to take back to the area I was stuck. So, like, the second I found anything of use, I was like, all right, back to the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which was the big anchor. Man, Hyatt's quest, though. Uh, should, do you guys want to, like, kind of turn to some, like, big lore stuff? <laughs> Please. Yeah. Let's let's do it. I never get to talk about this stuff, like, just generally. I, I make my videos and then interact with comments no one ever wants to talk to me about this <laughs> oh, okay well zach did you find um was there like one piece of this game that you enjoyed most doing like a deep dive on like digging your teeth into 
Mm. Okay, so the very uh, not our first video, our second, my second Elden Lord video was about the Crucible Knights, uh, mm -hmm. and I got a bunch of stuff wrong, which early days of the game, of course we did. So yeah. I actually just a couple weeks ago put out like a revised version of the Crucible Knights, and it was so much fun to like have this overview of the world now that I've been doing this for so long and go back and fix everything and like put all the lore where it's supposed to be. That was great. And the Crucible Knights are stupid interesting. And you're sure you don't want to call them Evergoals again? I will never say Evergal again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> something like a thousand comments on that video. It's pronounced jail. Okay. <laughs> I it wasn't it. <laughs> until your recent Crucible Night video that I was like, what are you talking about? It's definitely Gowl. <laughs> Listen, English Comments. doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm going to start the fight the other way. <laughs> what? Hey, what are but, those things? Are they actually prisons? Like They are. They're like extra dimensional prisons. Damn. I would hate to be stuck in one of those. So it's it's super weird. Um, OK, well, but before I get into this, because I'm about to go mm -hmm. on another tangent, um, I'm pretty sure that mispronouncing Evergal is how the algorithm picked us up and like vaulted that video on YouTube because yeah. so many, so many comments were correcting us that I think YouTube was like, oh, this is getting a lot of this is getting a lot of volume. We should put baby. this on everybody's. <laughs> you triggered the interaction. Yeah. So my, my brothers so are always telling me like, hey, do at least one thing wrong in every video. <laughs> so people can argue with you and you start more conversations. And I'm like, I don't want to get stuff wrong. Wow, well, you taking notes, <laughs> James? Oh, yeah. I'm already titling this episode GIF. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to call it Eldon Ring. The Eldon <laughs> Ring episode. Sounds like a Pokemon. Yeah, that does sound like a Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, so would you say, like, the, your Crucible Night double deep dive was your, like, favorite of all these videos? I kind of was just going through the list of what you have out there, and you got a lot of stuff, man. Yeah, uh, so when I started, I was doing two videos a week, uh, and that very quickly became unsustainable uh, after, we got, after we started getting some actual traction. I think mm -hmm. I did that for four months, and I was super burnt out, and I put up a community post like, guys, I can't keep doing two a week. I'm just bring it down to one. Um. But to answer your question, I think the Crucible Knight revisited and uh, my video on Millicent because I absolutely love her quest line and I hate the way it ended. What, what did you dislike about the ending of that quest? So I really felt like Millicent should have had some kind of greater impact on the story of Melania. Like just trying to figure all that out and realizing that like, oh, well, her and her sisters are all essentially like flowers. They're buds of Melania. Like they are. She is their mother in the way that like, you know, a dandelion is the mother to thousands of other dandelions. Um, mm -hmm. So they all grow from the Aeonia and presumably they all had the potential to become Scarlet Valkyries. But M Millicent was like the one that Gowrie decided, oh, OK, she's going to be like Melania's successor. And. After helping her defeat her sisters and essentially ch choose her own destiny, she takes out the 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 needle and decides to die. And I'm like, look, this is very from soft. This is like, you know, tragic hero shit that they do all the time. But it felt like, why? W like, why do that? It didn't make any sense for the character to me after going through her whole quest about how her ideal was I'm going to you know, give Melania back her humanity. And instead she chooses to give us Mikola's needle and just die. It, mm. I just rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, I totally get that. It's pretty disappointing. Yeah. And like, and like we can give, we can give Melania's Ionia after defeating her, the needle, and then we get the silver needle that allows us to get rid of the flame frenzy and everything. But like that should have been more satisfying. That should have been an interaction between Millicent and Melania. That should have been an NPC who got an actual scene with the character they were associated with. That's just yeah. my two cents. Yeah, I don't think we had to deliver the needle. Yeah, I mean, it could have been like an NPC summon even. I mean, they do that all the yeah. time in Souls Likes. C could you imagine? I, I, I would have been a million times happier if that ended with a scene where we summon M Millicent, she shows up, she gives Melania the needle, and then we're given, you know, this the unalloyed. Yeah, 
it would have been perfect. Uh, it's it's a cop out to kind of have her die, you know, ten feet from her quest ending. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I like the video. I I like the video about turtles. <laughs> Behold, dog. Yeah. No, for, for real though. Actually, that was a um, fun one. <laughs> cause, no, because I opened that video and I was expecting a lot of like um, you know, the lore of, about the turtle poop specifically, and that is there. But I also liked how you just dug into like turtles as just like a symbol and like just in general in this game yeah i mean they're they're all over the world and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you dig in (laughs) yeah (laughs) well and i think a big uh i don't know how much of this actually tied into that but george rr martin like he claims his own sigil like his his house sigil in his own fantasy world is that of a turtle so he has always has a turtle pin on his little like fun hat it's like turtles are kind of george rr martin's jam too Dang. And see that uh, that makes me wonder if it was like something he wrote or if that was like from Sauce's little nod, like "Hey, thanks, George." Yeah, like an homage <laughs> to him, like a fun present. Or I could also see George being like, "All right, big big turtle, give him a pope hat." <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'm I'm certain that Muriel is someone he came up with. I'm no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, I was watching. Uh, your video on the windmill village is it dominola yeah yeah i think that kind of also like so what we're talking about here with like elden ring being able to present a story without a lot of dialogue even i think that whole area is such a nice example of like something just weird going on and there's a lot of just like breadcrumbs that oh richie narrative breadcrumbs narrative breadcrumbs maybe <laughs> <laughs> but they piece together a story of like because there's a godskin apostle i believe that lives in that village so like the people are are dancing there to lure people in to give skin to this this godskin guy but there's no like real dialogue that implies that it's sort of just a set piece that tells a story and this game does such a good job of doing that all over absolutely and like so that village really threw me the first time I got there because those those ladies are horrifying when you when I you walk them. in. They're terrifying. And I think I had recently w- watched Midsommar and I was like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> is, is this seriously what's happening right now? Did I walk into like, did I walk into a village where they're going to Midsommar me? And yes, I did. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> almost the, in my opinion, almost the scariest part about that village is that they don't attack you and they just dance. Yep, until until you get further up the hill. Yeah, yeah. Once aggroed, it's pretty bad. They lull you into that false sense of security, like, oh, these guys are like doing their own thing. They they don't care about me. And then as soon as you get to that one point up the hill, the dog barks at you, and they all attack. And it's like, oh my god, (laughs) it's so smart. It's so smart. Yeah, I I went on Reddit, and one comment just explained it. It was like, like Disney World, but with more LSD and less skin. (laughs) Jesus. Oh, that whole area is pretty good in in a bad way. Funny story. One of the lowest drop rates for items in the game in that area. I had to farm that area for so long. And you can tell in the video when I cut to like the little uh, the little item description and you can see that I've got like 20 of the one cloak. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I like what's your build you use in a lot of these videos? That's not very much a lore question. I feel like you have like the little... You have the little red riding hood cap and a big shiny sword, which doesn't look like the the guts great sword. It's like a different great sword that I'm so like, jealous of and want. It's it's the great sword of guts's analog in the game. That is Blythe's weapon, the royal great sword, because Blythe is my boy, Ooh. and <laughs> I is like. Your boy? <laughs> no, he's still my boy. He'll be my boy forever. <laughs> he's a very good boy, um, and. I, I just I always loved his armor and I love that when you alter it and take the cloak off, it looks like a hundred percent more badass. Um but I didn't want to like just wear the wolf head, so I went with the noble hood, and someone pointed out to me in like one of the earlier videos, yo, is that like a slave knight gale cosplay build? And I went, No. But it should be. It like <laughs> yes, now I, it I, is. Yeah, now it is. I've been playing the game like this and making all these videos and I didn't realize I was running around dressed as Slave Knight Gale. So hell yeah. Hey, that's an old boss, right? Oh, this is what I'm bringing to the the podcast. At some point, you guys will have to convince me to revisit a Dark Souls game. 
Elden Ring is really my first uh, full-blown endeavor into actually getting through one of these things. Yeah, I wonder if it's difficult to go back. What do you think, Zach? I can answer this uh, because I I made a video on the the, uh, Moonlight Greatsword, and I had to go back and get footage from Dark Souls games, and it is difficult to go back. Um, Yeah. Which isn't to say, like, if... Because I still need to play Dark Souls 2. If I were to go back and start from scratch, I'd probably be okay. But, like, to jump from Elden Ring into Dark Souls 3 is jarring. Yeah. Oh, especially into Demon Souls. Like... Yeah. Because I went back... I had to go back to get footage from Demon Souls. And in my head, I was like, yo, I didn't play Demon Souls that long ago. And I loved the PlayStation 5, like, remake by Bluepoint. Like, this is going to be fun. I'm going to go back and play some Demon Souls. And no, it was like walking through mud. <laughs> and it was yeah. it was very hard to come to terms with like no jump button no horse with a the horse has a double jump like <laughs> which is the most insane thing they could give a riding thing in any game it's just so brave that they gave a horse a double jump i'm just giving a horse that's nice yeah oh Tor- Richie, Tor- you're gonna man. just to like break the immersion real quick you're gonna love editing this Richie. i had to like uh, mute my discord call but my recording was still going and i just had lingering covid coughs just like destroying the audio <laughs> so oh, you can no. have fun with that after <laughs> yeah i definitely will <laughs> oh goodness yeah so what are you uh what are you working on next zach what's the next like do you have any deep dives you can talk about so admittedly i'm I kind of fly by the seat of my pants a little bit like i mm-hmm. find things that i'm interested in i'll make notes and then i'll go back to them when i have the time um so i am working on a video right now the script is done i do need to do the recording it's a, I'm, I'm a little behind this week's episode didn't come out it's not going to come out until midweek next week because mm-hmm. i'm in the middle of a move but um it's going to be about the tarnished overall uh so the new oh. the new video is about like the history of the tarnished because it's told it's told to us in the intro a little bit, and we get a little more in game about how, you know, we were all descended from Godfrey in one way or another. Um, you know, if you rest at all the right uh, at all the right grace points and talk to Melina, there's some dialogue from America about us. But it wasn't until I got the Elden Ring book, the the Book of Knowledge, Volume 1, came in the mail a, few, a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I was able to see all of that story laid out in front of me with all of the proper descriptions already laid out so I didn't have to go and find them myself. And I realized that the Tarnished are... Well, I always had a theory that we were being lied to, but it's almost a certainty after seeing all of this laid out in front of me that the Tarnished are being lied to by the fingers. Hmm. Uh, because Marika... So, so Marika absolutely had a plan for us when she banished us and Godfrey. And... It seems as though the fingers usurped that plan by bringing when we came back to the lands between, because they play it off as very much like, oh, it's your destiny to become Elden Lord, and we're going to lead you there, and we're going to, you know, we are the source of grace, and that's not true. Uh, Marika told us back when we were banished, however many millennia ago, that eventually after our deaths, we would we would be given our grace back and called back to the lands between to wage war. That's something she intended for us. So the f- showing up there and the fingers being like, follow our law and like bring back the golden order. That's them usurping Marika's purpose for the tarnished. It's like a facade. Absolutely. Guess. And like there's a bunch of stuff that leads us to that. Like there's there's the original dialogue. There's a conversation with Smithing Master Hugh where he explains that his job is to create a god slaying weapon. And he lets slip that that job is a promise he made to Queen Marika who is the one who enslaved him in the hold. So he works for her and she wanted him to make a God slaying weapon. So yeah, it's all over the place. We are definitely lied to in game. The intent is for us to become Elden Lord, but the fingers don't want us to follow the plan set by America. They want us to keep feeding the greater will. She -hmm. wants us to destroy it. Does that include the three fingers? Is no, because that, like, the- <laughs> that dude went rogue. Is that <laughs> that dude went rogue? Um, yeah, the three fingers just want the world to burn. That's it. Oh, yeah. That ending does kind of uh, make that happen, huh? <laughs> it, do, it do burn. It, yeah, do, it, it, burn do, it do burn like that. 
But that also gives us like one of the most interesting lore bits in the game if you follow all the right stuff for Melina, because you get that extra scene where she opens her eye and she's inherited the power of the Glomide Queen. Do do you feel like that's gonna be the deal? Uh, so you mentioned DLC leaks earlier. Um, does that tie into that? I want to say no, not yet. Okay. I think if we ever get a follow up to that, it's gonna be down the line. My theory for the new DLC is that it's going to deal with one of two things. Either literally visiting the Badlands, uh, which is where the Tarnished went after, you know, we were banished. Or going into the Dream World and uh, meeting Mikola. I don't know which of those things I want more. I I, I want to meet Mikola. Look, the Badlands seem cool. All about the Badlands. Personally, I'd rather go to the, the Land of Reeds. But I, I yeah. want to meet Mikola. Because <laughs> he's just kind of chilling in that egg still, right? Yeah. You think there's uh, like he... any chance of that body getting uh, reanimated? I can't even tell if he's dead. There's just like a long arm hanging out of the egg. <laughs> I, I, I think he's asleep. I don't okay. know that he can be reanimated without getting back to the Halleck tree. But if someone got him back to the Halleck tree, that long arm is definitely an adult arm. So he must have been on his way to waking up. Damn, I'll give him a ride there. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see inside the egg. As, as far as I can tell through all my research, he's the only benevolent demigod there was. So yeah, let's get Mikola back in the Halleck tree. I want to meet him. Yeah, because his whole thing was that he was like a, a pretty smart and kind person trapped in a sickly little boy body. Yeah. Um, well, okay. I've caught a lot of flack for this in comments because it's the internet, but Uh-oh. um, but like Mikola, Mikola is definitely a boy. Saint Trina presented as a girl. Mm-hmm. Um, I have used Saint the word Trina. they. Who's that? Saint Trina. Oh, okay. So Saint oh, Trina, Saint Trina. Is, Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Saint Trina is the 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 form that Mikola used to walk the lands between, and you know, like kind of be that benevolent leader. Um, dealt very heavily in dreams. Mm-hmm. Uh, St. Trina's arrows are those arrows that in early game, like before any of the patches, were like super OP because they could put things to sleep and you could just murder them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had no idea that was connected. Yeah. And there's a whole there's a whole cut quest line about St. Trina where they straight up confirm that St. Trina is Mikola. Always take cut content with a grain of salt. I would love to see that brought back in the DLC. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the assets that were used for that are still in the game. We just can't access them. But lo- long story short, I kind of lost my train of thought here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was getting uh, I was getting I was getting flack for saying they because Mikola presented as female and as far as we know, was male. And I've tried to make sure that for any character that isn't outwardly one or the other, I'm being neutral. And that gets a lot of that gets a lot of negative comments. <laughs> it, yeah, it turns out there's a lot of like shitheads on the internet <laughs> you yeah. ignore that sometimes being yeah. respectful get your ass beat <laughs> yeah I, d- I did i don't know if you noticed but i did the same thing for turtle pope because oh. uh muriel has a very deep voice but what turtle mm-hmm. wouldn't have a deep voice and muriel is a traditionally female name yeah and isn't there some like gender stuff with like radagon and america america Yes, and that's hotly debated as to what exactly is going on there. My interpretation is that Radagon is Marika. We know mm-hmm. that from in game; they straight up say it. If you follow the right, que- if you follow Gold Mask Quest, um, but the question is, when did Radagon become Marika and vice versa? Because uh, there's a lot of lore saying how Radagon hated his red hair and all that stuff. So, in my understanding, Radagon must have split off from Marika and become his own person, his own being after the war with the giants. Uh, I think that the fell god of the giants cursed Marika, so she separated f- that part of herself, the cursed part of herself, and made Radagon, which is why Radagon has the red hair of the giants. Um, then, after being trapped within the Ur tree, Radagon and Marika were forced to be the same person again. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, that's pretty hotly debated. I'm not really sure why, because I feel like that line of thinking makes sense with all the lore we're given, but there are people who straight up will not accept that Radagon and America were the same person before they were trapped in the Hall- or before they were trapped in the Earth Tree. I think even um, I think even Vati Vidya, 
who is like the foremost authority in the space, has said that Radagon and America were not connected before that. Um, I don't agree, but I respect the hell out of the man. Yeah. Yeah, because I thought the big stink here was that Radagon was with Renala, correct? And then, you know, yes. it was just believed that Radagon left for America. And But, oh, at the time, America's with, you know, Horolu. So she, yeah, she had already banished. She had already banished Godfrey when she called Radagon back uh -huh. to be her new consort. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about it, like... Radagon America having children is literally just America having children with herself, if you follow my theory, which makes sense <laughs> as to why Mikola and Melania are both so messed up. Mikola is stuck mm. in a body that can't age, and Melania yeah. is completely, is like cursed by an, the influence of the goddess of Rot. So... Yeah, she was born with the Rot, correct? Is that... Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so That's the worst end of the deal. <laughs> Yeah, but like, like they're their only two children, and uh, I don't. We talked about how we don't really curse, but and this isn't a curse, but it's also some are sketchy you space. Say a cuss? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. Uh -huh. They are, they are incest babies, and they're both born with malformations. Mm -hmm. That was pretty. Which tame. makes sense to me. <laughs> I thought you were just going to say, fuck. <laughs> I don't know how blue we're going, okay? Yeah. We're, we're somewhere yeah. in between there. Yeah. Between incest babies and fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know that there's the title of the episode. <laughs> nope. That, that's what they mean by the lands between. Oh, my God. Oh, no, this is good. <laughs> hey, can I, can I ask, like, a quick uh, process question? How, like, in the moment are you, uh, like, are you, on your first playthrough, are you making these connections, or, all right, so I'll, I'll say transparently, mm -hmm. every time I go into, like, a FromSoft game, I go in, like, expecting to take notes and fully understand everything, but I get so distracted by just, like, the, um, the grandness of it, and I, I kind of just throw plot and story out the window until I, uh, look up a lore explainer afterwards. <laughs> Is that the case with either of you guys, or did you understand the whole time? Uh, I am very superficial, and if I think something kicks ass, I'll do some research on it while playing. If yeah. something doesn't immediately strike me as interesting, I kind of gloss over it. Um, and the fact that so much of Elden Ring kicked ass is what made me want to start exploring it. Right, right. Yeah, like the same way where I... First, I think accidentally running into uh, DJ Khaled's house, just just Khaled. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we call Khaled DJ Khaled. Um, yeah, <laughs> but accidentally running over there and seeing that this whole place was just completely rotted. At this point, I hadn't watched a lot of like the like cutscenes leading up to the game, so I didn't know a lot of the lore between uh, Melania and it's, shit. Melania, damn it, it's too many M names. Mel <laughs> Melania. <laughs> Melana, fuck. Melania. Uh, yeah, uh, Milano fighting General Radon. And the lore between those two is just incredible. So like, I, I found myself, whenever I'd find a cool area like that, I would start diving into it, and then I would just fall down these like hour-long Wikipedia holes of like trying mm -hmm. to like gauge all the info from this area. And like learning everything about General Radon is insane. What was great about that in the early days, too, is that so many people were disagreeing with each other about what was actually going on. Yeah, like, it was all just, it was all theories. and Yeah. Oh, actually, that's something I personally really like about Elden Ring, and I know a lot of the community doesn't. Mm -hmm. There's enough information here to really lay things out. There's not as much speculation as there is in Bloodborne or Dark Souls. Like, the yeah. information is there. You just have to work your ass off to find it, and you don't have to speculate quite as much. Mm -hmm. yeah like a lot of it is especially with um like you said the gold mask quest kind of lays out the whole radagon america thing pretty pretty clear but yeah it's like you're rewarded with lore in this game it's where i think like i mean i really liked the atmosphere of, of bloodborne um but i could i don't know i just either i'm bad at the game or i just couldn't get through it but elden ring seemed like a lot more um not forgiving it was difficult but I liked that I was being given story as my like reward for for exploring everything. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I I love Bloodborne, like really love Bloodborne, but I'd be lying if I said, you know, pull out Ludwig's Holy Blade and bonk everything on the head wasn't my go-to strategy to get through the game. Yeah. <laughs> I was a big uh, Kirkhammer guy. I wish that was in Elden Ring. It is. Well, sort of. Yeah, There, there's a, I mean, it doesn't have like an alt version, but there. if you want a big hammer to swing, yeah, that's there. Well, 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 I'm getting on Elden Ring now, guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I forget exactly where it is, but look up Great Horn Trigoth. His weapon is essentially a giant hammer. You love to see it. Actually, looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Right? Can I dual wield these? <laughs> you can. I mean, you won't be able to roll, but you can. <laughs> it's worth it as long as I can jump. I don't need it. I'm, I'm oh. glad. I'm glad I could add to your build. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Fantastic! As long as I can keep jumping. Oh boy, I had so there was like some other characters I was wondering if you had like considered looking into or if you had more info. So there's Bring it on, man. <laughs> there's this guy, Blackguard Big Bogart, who's just yes. like boiling prawns and he his house is uh the boil prawn shack, which <laughs> You mean you mean our boy. Our our, our, our boy. boy. <laughs> but he Blackguard robbed the Big lizard Bogart. lady. Yeah, he stole the necklace from our lizard friend. Uh, yes, Raya, whatever. But yeah, have you uh, or have you already done a deep dive on that guy? I really like so, the thought that there's a dude out there just making making big shrimp. <laughs> ch- check out the dung eater video. He is a main character in the dung eaters quest line. Um, oh, there's goodness. not a lot of history on big ba- on Blackguard Big Bogart, mm-hmm. but he, he to me he's interesting because I think he's one of the few people that understands that what's going on in the world isn't right like something is something is wrong like when he straight up says you know (laughs) when he when he straight up says maybe it's broken like grace i mean like something something along those lines it's like oh this regular dude who you know was definitely in prison because that's what his mask tells us Mm -hmm. and his quest line goes into it uh, who's just out here boiling prawn and likes to say, America's tits, you look hungry, you must be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably one of the smartest people in the lands between because he's the only one who looks at all of this and goes, yeah, something's not right. Yeah. He's kind of like the audience <laughs> surrogate in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or like to reference like Lord of the Rings, he's, I, I was getting like a, a Tom Bombadil vibe where like there's just such a regular dude living out in the forest, but he knows so much more than than even our characters in the game do. They have similar names too, Tom Tom Bombadil and Big 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 Bogart, Big, Bo- <laughs> Big, Bo- <Bogart. laughs> Big Bogaruni, yeah, Blackguard Big Bogart, Tom Bombadil. It's the same guy, Tom Tom Bogaruni. <laughs> hey, well, except I don't think Tom Bombadil got defiled by the dung eater. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a bummer. I don't I don't know if you watched that video, but being defiled by the dung eater isn't something anybody wants. Yeah, he's it's, got it's those, bad. Like, uh, it's, he's got those, it's, per, those pox or whatever. It's so much worse than the game lets on, guys. Like, it, when uh, you really look into this, it's disgusting. It's real was, messed up. That was like your Halloween special, right? Like, or is like an October video? That that was our last because we did spooky lore for all of October. That was our last one in October, and I saved it for last because I was like, "This is disgusting. This needs to end out the month." I'm gonna have to get through (laughs) that one. (laughs) He's one of the people I always like avoid. Like the fact that he's just kind of chilling in the in the round table, sort of like, "Hey man, my body's in the dungeons. You can let me out." I'm like, "No, dude." So I've never even bothered with that quest line. And, And he's not even like, "Hey, go help me out." He's like, "Hey, let me out, and I'll defile you." Yeah, well, like, dude, you're good. Name, just stay there, dude. Your name is Dung Eater. I don't want to talk to you. The I, I got a, Dung Eater. I got so many comments from people being like, "Yeah, as soon as I met him in the jail, I killed him." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's probably the best ending for his quest. If you just straight up murder him when you meet him." Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could just close that door in the round table. <laughs> you open it up and go, <laughs> "Nope." Close that fool back in there. It's messed up. Put him in the ever gal. Yeah, throw him in the Evergal. Sorry, we're trying to get the oh. algorithm going. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I remember we were talking about this before. Um, Evergals. Quick aside. Mm-hmm. Evergals are pocket dimensions. It's the reason why when we fight Vike in the Evergal. Oh my God, now I'm saying it. Uh, when we fight <laughs> Vike in the place. Everjail, <laughs> mm-hmm. he doesn't have his frenzied power because he's cut off from the God of Frenzied Flame. 
Whoa. inside of the jail. Who oh, who made these things? Because they um, lock up a lot of the a lot of the crucible knights are stuck in them. But then there's like you know relatively uh, normal people kind of stuck in them. So all the people in Ever Jails actually make sense for why they're there, Ex- uh, except for one Zamor knight who I think I know why he's there, but I'm not totally sure. Um, so there's the Crucible Knight, who I theorize likely, you know, talk some shit after Godfrey got uh, got thrown out of the Lands Between and mm-hmm. like, was likely put in a jail as, as an example. Uh, there's Adon, the Thief of Fire, who was in an Ever Jail because he stole the fire of the Fell God. That's why we can find Fire Monks by his Ever Jail, like, just hanging out in Liernia, because they're the ones who put him in there. Like, they chased him there, put him in the jail, because he stole that spell. Um oh. There's a Bloodhound Knight in one, I think, uh, which, yeah, uh, Darrowil, because he betrayed Ronnie. Uh, so he ended up in one, and Blythe wanted you to help him kill him. Uh, there's also, who else, who else, who else? Vike is in one, who I theorize Vike was placed in there out of respect. Like, this guy almost became Elden Lord. They threw him in there to, to cut him off from the Frenzied Flame. Oh, man, I had one in my head. Oh, uh, Electo, leader of the Black Knives. She was in there because she led the attack on Godwin. Yeah, that was a crime. That that was the crime. <laughs> <laughs> that one set off some things. Yeah, man. Uh, so, something about shattering. I don't know. It's not oh. that important. <laughs> oh, God. Who broke the... Man, I... Like, this conversation is just... Every single question I have is sort of just, like, boiling up. Because I, I was reading also, like, between America and Radagon... Isn't like one of them, one of them smashed the Elden Ring and the other person seems to be trying to mash it back together. Is there yeah, like a, so a push and pull going on there? There is. Marika destroyed the Elden Ring and Radagon tried to fix it. Oh. And then that's why they got, he couldn't fix it. So that's why they got locked in the Erd Tree by the Greater Will. And uh, Marika, sh- Marika shattered the Elden Ring because of the Black Knight of Black Knives. Yeah. If you subscribe to like just the straight written word, I, I have other theories. Dude, that was your exact. There's moment. a lot of editing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was your moment to say if you subscribe to Square Table Gaming. <laughs> that was. I was your, waiting for it too. Yeah, that was yeah. your moment. If you smash that like button and subscribe, to the greater you'll world. get your answers. <laughs> subscribe to the great. I'm just gonna change the channel name to the Greater Will. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's actually a hey, great name for an Elden Ring channel. <laughs> that's not bad. That's a good name. Uh, wow. hey, it was you never our intention <laughs> to do straight Elden Ring. <laughs> hey, it honestly, you're really good at covering a lot of the more obscure topics. Like, obviously, there's, like, the big ones, but even, like, big plot points in Elden Ring, I feel like they have so many little moving pieces that there's just, like, plenty of good spots to dive in on, and I think you're doing it. I mean, yeah, that was, that was, I appreciate it, man. That was our intention, or, like, my intention with these from the beginning was... Like, look, eventually Vati's going to make start making content again, and it's going to be incredible, and he's going to follow all of the major plot points and really tell you the story, but nobody's out there talking about all of these individual characters that have really deep, rich stories written about them, and, like, like nobody's gonna, so why don't I do that? I'll be the guy who does that. Yeah, and, and getting, like, a, especially, like, a weekly format is wonderful. I think the only other, like, weekly videos I see are people that seem to have access to every single asset in the game and they're just like yeah you know diving on like a like character model stories um it's like uh zuli the witch maybe Is oh that I, I love zuli's channel fantastic, Zuli's fantastic. channel yeah because they're they're good at pointing out lore based on design and you know that that's well, a fun part too yeah and what, what's cool about that is that like sometimes i'll be writing it like when i was writing the dung eater video i watched zuli's video on the dung eater and she had this information that was like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. Like, there's no way I would have known this without going into the assets. Like, I'm going to call out Zuli. I'm going to make sure I say, like, hey, this came from here. Mm-hmm. But, like, this fits in really well with the story that I'm telling or, like, the, the lore I've discovered. So it's having those other creators out there is only helpful. Yeah, and I think that's all in all bringing a better uh, Elden Ring community. And for people like me and, and Richie, we just get a wealth of content. We can go and learn everything we want about Elden Ring. Is that I, I? I got a question for you guys. Is there anything specifically that you want to want to see a video on? I, I actually do. Um, 
and maybe this already exists. I don't know. My, my initial thing while playing Elden Ring was realizing that all of these, like all of the symbology is just based around like limbs and like severed fingers. And like, even like the first trailer ever was like, um, like eight arms, like kind of grabbing, like severed arms, grabbing each other. Or There's, grafted like, boy. <laughs> grafted uh, so boy. much about grafted stuff. Has anyone like talked about just the symbology of like, uh, what all f- of this like horrible body shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the body horror means in the land between? Yeah, somebody must have at this point. I mean, I a lot of it comes down to like duality, like the duality of Merrick and Radagon being the same person, the duality of Trina and Mikola, the duality of the Omen twins. Like, mm-hmm. I think a lot of it comes from there. Um, this kind of focus on fingers and body parts, it kind of falls by the wayside later in the game. I think they were really banking on the whole Godric the Grafted thing to bring people in because grafting yeah. really doesn't exist once you leave that area. I, I think it's possible that uh, Reichard may have invented grafting, but uh, that, that mostly just comes from him being the Lord of Blasphemy in the hands throughout the lands between looking a lot like his hands. Um yeah, but, even like his sword is filled with like these tiny hands, just like. So that uh, that actually sorry. that's specifically because <laughs> yeah yeah little hands and arms coming out of it. The blast. That's sword? because he's eaten. He eats tarnished. So those are the hands mm-hmm. of tarnished that he's eaten and like taken into the world serpent and uh, like made part of his strength. Okay. Just googling um, that blade right now. Oh, it's yeah. little hands. Blasphemous blade. <laughs> Um, I found my little list here of a uh, arm body horror in this game. Also, just like Ronnie having four arms. Um, yeah, and like the two souls in uh, the same puppet body, like how her head's kind of splitting out of the <laughs> the doll body. Yeah, um, Dee's armor is like extra arms oh, coming yeah, out of because, him. Uh, so I do have a video on D that goes into that. Uh, his armor represents both twins. It represents D the... Uh, Oh, God, what are their titles? D, the Beholder of the Dead, and D, the Hunter of the Dead. So their armor okay. represents both of them. Gonna have I, to I, check I, that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the D, the Hunter of the Dead, is the gold side of the armor, and D, the Beholder of the Dead, is the silver side of the armor. That's so tight, man. <laughs> huh. Just the metalness of all of this. It, it, <laughs> th- there's, like, no boss fight or song or piece of armor where I'm just not like, man, that's metal as hell. I do. that's tight. Yeah. <laughs> what so my my request is more simple but before i get into that so back on like the two fingers is it implied that there's like really long limbs kind of going through the core of the land between or is there like a giant doing a peace sign under the floor so yes but those aren't the fingers um the thing underneath the lands between that's like ever growing and has body parts going in all directions. That's Godwin. That's oh. Godwin the golden. My goodness. Yes. He's a that's big his, flat yeah. thing now. Like yeah. His face that's what's left in... of his body. Because <sighs> when Ronnie, when the, when the night of two fingers happened or when the night of two fingers, Jesus, Christ, <laughs> when the night of black knives happened. Yeah. The night yeah. of two fingers is a totally different thing. <laughs> okay. We started on the night of three fingers. <laughs> Oh, God, may chaos take the world. Um, (laughs) So uh, after the Night of Black Knives, Ronnie separated her body and soul, killed Mm -hmm. her body, uh, put her soul into the doll so that she is now cut off from her two fingers. She can't she is no longer an Empyrean. She broke her fate. Um, But to do that, she needed to destroy Godwin's soul and not his body. So Mm -hmm. one of them had the body die. One of them had the soul die. Godwin isn't technically dead his soul is gone but his body continues to grow and spread through the lands between oh boy are we do you think we're gonna get some dlc on that is that just wishful thinking i don't know what they would do with it big sloppy okay okay ground monster hear me out hear Mm -hmm. me out i'm i'm excited now uh so mikola and godwin are are entangled somehow uh, Mikola may have been trying to bring Godwin back from the dead. There's dialogue in um, 
that one of the ghost spirits gives you if you're up at that one fort in the, uh, you know, where you face Commander O'Neill to get the uh, the other half of that Hallow Tree medallion. There's a ghost there that talks like he's talking to his lord about how he couldn't bring they couldn't bring someone else back during the eclipse. Mm-hmm. There's all of this conversation around like the eclipse somehow being related to bringing Godwin back from the dead. And it seems as though the lord he was speaking to was Mikola. So Mikola and Godwin have a good relationship with each other and Mikola may have been trying to bring him back. So if the DLC focuses on Mikola, I'd be very surprised if we don't get new info for Godwin. I'm going to be sick. This is fantastic. (laughs) I could be wrong about all of this. This could all be wrong, but this is just what I'm finding. Yeah, but I think like, you know, for how old, in in terms of how many games have come out this year, Elden Ring is old now. Like it's kind of in the hindsight. So the fact that you're even giving me things to speculate on that I just hadn't even considered, that's excellent. This many months from a game's launch. Anything to really good. revive interest in a good game <laughs> is <laughs> is good for everyone. Yeah, and like we know FromSoft doesn't go halfway with their DLCs. Like I think it's ar- arguable it's arguable that the best part of Dark Souls 3 is its DLC. Definitely with Bloodborne as well, I would say. Yeah, oh my god, facing off against Ludwig? <sighs> yeah. What was, Richie, did you play all the the DLC for like these various other games which of them had the the painted world is that dark souls 3 yep yep yep. dark yeah Mm -hmm. and there's the painted world in dark souls 1 but that's not dlc or anything it's not as tight uh, it's different i mean it's cool but yeah no dark souls 3 went hard on that Hmm. um didn't miyazaki say that there's already a new game like pretty much done (laughs) I don't know, man. I, I can't keep up. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's actually just... Miyazaki's releasing more work for Zach. Is, <laughs> yeah. is all I mean, just look. a stack of papers on your desk. <laughs> yeah. If the, if the channel keeps growing, I'm cool with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got to be Bloodborne 2, right? I still... I would love Bloodborne 2, but I still want to play Bloodborne on my PS5. I want yeah, toss the that exact to Blue same Point. game update, updated. Right? Like, why hasn't that happened yet? People have been speculating about it for how many years now? And just nothing. Yeah, like, they gave them Demon's Souls. They did a great job. Like, it looked great. I'll probably have to play that at some point. But it looked a little... For how nice it it looks, it kind of looked like it plays kind of clunky. Demon's Souls, Uh, that is. That's kind of the point of Demon's Souls, though. It was way before everything was refined. And that's that's why I love the Blue Points remake of it, is it's still as clunky as the original Demon Souls. I didn't want that to be better. I wanted it to be Demon Souls, and that's what they gave us. Oh, so you got the same feeling, but it looks nice. Exactly. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And it's still a, a one of two PlayStation 5 exclusive games. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> we got um, Demon Souls, Ratchet and Clank. Oh, and Returnal. Sorry. There's Sp- all the games. Spider-Man. We, we got this. Oh, no. Spider-Mans are on PC now, aren't they? Yeah, Spider-Mans everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what were you going to say there, Richie? Um, I, the idea of a Bloodborne 2 is just so terrifying to me. Because, <laughs> like, Bloodborne, it's, like, one of my favorite video games of all time. And mm-hmm. it's so self-contained. Um, I'm sure they could find a way to do a second one. But I almost wish they would just um, do something entirely new. Yeah, like uh, Elden Ring 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, or you know, or just give me a new armored core. Armored souls, yeah. Aren't they oh. working on a new? Um, they are working on a, a new armored core, aren't they? It's yeah, it's all been uh, maybe all but confirmed. Like it definitely exists. I don't know if there's been a formal trailer or anything. That's pretty well, fun. There... <laughs> oh, I never got into. Still... Um... Or what? Are you, are you gonna say you love armored core? Actually, no, I, I admittedly have not played Armored Core. Damn it. Um, I, I was just going to say, I still I still do want to see a dark uh, a Bloodborne 2, mostly because I would want to see what ending they went with, because every ending for that game, it would create a wildly different sequel. Yeah, actually, I think the way you could do a Bloodborne 2 is like the same way that they do Dark Souls 2 and like Dark Souls sequels in general, like 
maybe Bloodborne 2 takes place in like a different dimension or like thousands and thousands of years after the events of Bloodborne 1 and like tie them together in a loose way. But Oh, like you someone, know, I, I, someone rediscovered the old blood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's how you do a Bloodborne 2 successfully. Um, I don't want to see like Garman ever again or like <laughs> anything like that. Um, but what does what does our baby elder god look like when it grows up? Our little squid man. Yeah, I mean that's how you do it, right? Maybe like they canonize the um the slug ending, and you see that thing like two thousand years after that happened. Um, <laughs> Honey, what's wrong? Cool. You've barely touched your three umbilical cords. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you know Bloodborne, James. I know, I know Bloodborne. <laughs> Yeah, because that's what I liked most about Dark Souls 2. It wasn't like, hey, here's in Orlando again. No shade to Dark Souls 3. Love Dark Souls 3. Mm-hmm. But it was like entirely its own thing, but still maintained the ethos of Dark Souls. It's kind of like Xenoblade Chronicles, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> is is that how that works? Just, I don't know. I just got to take my shot. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe this is a good transition point. Um, did you enjoy any other video games this year, Zach? <laughs> Like, do, should we talk about the year as a whole? Oh, my gosh. I, I, I literally, I have a stack of games in front of me, and I, I couldn't tell you what year I played each of them. Like, this is the last couple yeah. years have been a blur. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? So, because this, this episode is sort of the beginning of our, our goatee season. We're trying to make a list of 10 games that made the cut. And honestly, the years are really starting to blend together. So, <laughs> it's yeah. it's a tall order. Um, yeah, like what what year did Resident Evil 8 come out? Because that would be on my list if it was this year, but I don't think it was. <laughs> I, Richie, we might have even was last year. Yeah, we might have had this conversation a couple episodes ago. Where it was like, oh yeah, Resident Evil 8, or like I couldn't remember any games that came out last year. And then it was revealed like through some Googling that Resident Evil 8 was last year, Monster Hunter Rise was last year. Um, damn. Inscription was last year. Oh, inscription? Mm good games yeah but man i uh even like this year like pokemon arceus and elden ring came out in the beginning of the year what happened to the last 10 months i think a lot of just really good indies right it's been a big year for the little guys and by the little yeah. guys i mean like the devolver fu- annapurna <laughs> yeah annapurna <laughs> and devolver published games <laughs> yeah big indie um oh Sorry, I will go back to Elden Ring real quick. A video on the Great Jar. You know the oh, big uh, the big jar. Have you dabbled in the big jar? Do you mean the one that's uh, Garden Coliseum? Mm-hmm. We are going to find out about that in the DLC. That's all but confirmed because uh, tons of information has been found around Coliseums. Mm, fantastic! I want to see the Great Jar up and doing stuff. He's so big. <laughs> Yeah, I thought you were talking about Alexander. No, I didn't bigger. Realize, I, for, I forgot there, there was a bigger. bigger jar. More. I want more jars. So, I Vati's already covered Alexander as much as anybody can, so I wouldn't mm-hmm. want to go into Alexander. But um, I do. I am toying with the idea of doing something around what the jars are in general, because they're definitely man-made, um, but there's some dispute as to how they operate. Like, some people think that Alexander actually ate some of Radon's remains, and that's why we find a red hair after we kill Alexander. Um, but other people think that the jars only eat the contents of other jars, and I'm not sure if that's right. So, yeah, that's something I'm going to explore. Good. Damn. Because there's got to be a lot of goop in the Great Jar. <laughs> there has to be so many people. What did you oh, eat, Great oh, Jar? Oh, I think, I think Zuli, I think Zuli actually looked inside of the Great Jar and found a troll. What? Don't don't quote me on that, but I think I think the like the model of a troll was inside of the great jar. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to deep dive on this jar. I love that thing. <laughs> do you think that's the developers like literally trolling? Like, did they do that intentionally? <laughs> I think like a lot of ideas. Tundra? I think a lot of ideas get dropped halfway through. I think a good <laughs> chunk of Elden Ring is like, hey, this is really cool, and it's like, yeah, but we're not doing that. Just leave it in the code. Yeah, they just like bury assets. It's kind of funny. They're like, uh, crap, where do we put this big dragon? I don't know. Put it underground. (laughs) We'll move it later. Yeah. 
Yeah, why are there two Estelles? Uh, put one underground, man. I don't know. It's a shade of Estelle. Who knows? I don't know. Kick it under the rug, <laughs> man. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so I, uh, outside of Dark Souls, I think, um, I think the, the good question we had here, though, is probably to start to wrap this up, but how have the Dark Souls and the From Software franchise prepared you for being a dad? Oh, yeah. Um, well, this... I found that they, they both have a lot of screaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, just panicked screaming. That That's <laughs> that's pretty constant. <laughs> so you're used to it. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like I, I ran the gauntlet and I was ready. Mm-hmm. Is um dodge rolling a mechanic anywhere in fatherhood? Uh, not for me, but I I, ha- I have to know how to counter a good dodge roll. <laughs> yeah, kids will they'll, um, they'll just kind of roll off things, so they'll dodge roll, and if you put an arm out to stop it, you win. <laughs> yeah, you really have to get those iframes down, or it could get real bad. I th- yeah, I think so. Again, this is my first year as a papa now too, and well, I think you've actually been at it for. Th- your kids three now is that right Zach? uh she just she just turned two in october just turned two nice congrats on being two i heard those are they call them the lovely twos yeah, yeah. The very oh, nice, they are lovely the very nice yeah twos. <laughs> she's two years old and we're in a new house so it's great she's uh she, she's in a great way right now she absolutely doesn't yell uh i'll be right back and then run into rooms and slam the door like she's a teenager <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. never happened you've given her more doors to slam <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> yeah i think um so starting is at least getting through elden ring at this point and i guess my previous attempts at souls games i think they've prepared me from like you know it kind of feels like i'm constantly stepping on a rake in in souls games and in in fatherhood like say i sneeze without letting rowan know the sneeze is about to happen it will just wreck his next like half hour. It will scare him so bad. So now I'm like, you know, if if I'm about to sneeze, I got to warn him. Kind of like running through any place in a Souls game where it feels like you're just stepping on rakes constantly. It's like every single trap <laughs> in every dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Th- well, I think that's going to that's going to help, too, because eventually you get to a point where in Souls games, like you run into a trap and it kills and you're like, that was funny. Rowan's going to do the same thing. You're going to sneeze and he's going to think it's funny. Once once he's done being scared of it, it will get funny, just like a Souls game. <laughs> as long as I keep throwing the traps at him, or like, you know, a coffee mug I left a little too close to his playpen, he just dumps it in the wall, so. Yeah, that's like being invaded. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of parallels here. Wow, the duality of fatherhood. <laughs> <laughs> the duality of fatherhood and gaming. Yeah. That's a book. Write that book. The two, the two <laughs> sticky jelly fingers. That the baby always has. <laughs> oh my god, that's like Roderica giving you the jellyfish summon. Wow. The poison jellyfish. It's, it's always there. That jellyfish is actually a character. There, you can find its partner and let them run off together. Sorry. What? <laughs> really? Yeah, that part's so sweet, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. That was like the most tender moment of Elden Ring. Wow, I oh, need to. Uh, you, you didn't. You didn't think. You didn't think putting the the wedding ring on your uh, dead doll waifu was the most tender moment of Elden Ring. <laughs> well, it got me the Moonlight Greatsword. So, <laughs> hey, did we all do I'll the same it. ending? Like our our first uh, run, did we all go with Ranny the Witch? Oh yeah, yeah. That felt like the canon way to do it. Yeah, because everything. Um, yeah, you know, I'm a big Fire Emblem head, but anything that kind of. Uh, goes away from the main power so like kind of siding with the church and fire emblem is terrible and it seems like going with any end that really deals with the elden ring at all was seemed like the bad choice i'd rather uh follow the witch into the dark moon sky get on out of the lands between yeah do not continue the cycle by any means yeah never continue the cycle (laughs) Yeah, that's uh, that's clearly the best option. Even though the more you dig into that, the it's very it's very obscure. Like I I honestly still don't quite understand what <laughs> what it means. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I think the English translations are actually wrong. Like I think I remember reading that like if you listen to the if you read the Japanese translations like directly from the game, the meaning of that ending changes. 
Yeah, I remember reading that a couple months ago. I forget what the actual like distinction was, but the the way that we read it, it was kind of uh, I don't want to say bittersweet, but it sort of seemed like you just kind of go and live in darkness for a long time. But like it actually isn't so terrible in the other translations. And then someday the Age of Fire starts, and it turns out Elden Ring was a prequel. Damn it! I've heard that theory before. Is that common? <laughs> That theory actually does come up a lot, but they, they have been very vocal that Elden Ring exists in its own universe. Got it. Okay. I, I would love to tie it all together, but they have been very adamant that it does not tie together. Yeah. Well, that's the that's a good thing about head cannons. It, if it makes sense to you, then that's right in your own head. And you don't have to listen to anyone else. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have to give George R. R. Martin any more money to link to other games. Yeah. I'll, I'll give George R. R. Martin to write another video game. I'll give him the money. <laughs> let's, let's, let's let him write more lore. I'm in. Having him as like a world building guy, because I don't know really how intently he was writing all these things. I feel like he might have presented a general like world and a bunch of character names and kind of let the FromSoft team have fun with it. Um, but I think he's such Accor- a good world building person to hire. I hope more people consider it. According to his interviews, he really he did write all of the story of the families. He wrote the history of the families in the lands between. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Yeah, it was like recent, right? He said that he did a lot of like the backstory. Yeah, I think. and like that, and that's why we have incest babies. Oh, cl- makes total sense. <laughs> Classic. That's like his thing. The Lannister House of the Jack. Oh my God, Elden Ring. Did did we want to jump back to game of twenty twenty two games? <laughs> I'm, I not, had to not, bring up not the, that I ever want to <laughs> stop talking about Elden Ring, but I had to like I brought up the Great Jar again because I just could not think of what games had just come out. So, have you been playing Pokemon or anything, Zach? I have not. Um, so, Sword and Shield kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, and since then I've been waiting to see what happens with each new Pokemon release. And uh, with what I've been seeing, I'm pretty glad I waited on this one. I think this one, at least so one of us here on the show, I won't say names, has the game. Uh, It looks like it doesn't run very well, (laughs) but everything else seems like a good Pokemon game. Yeah, my thing with Pokemon is just like, it's always going to activate the big dumb kid brain in me. And I'm just going to like brain off just catch pokemon like it's gonna work for me every time even if it runs pretty bad um yeah so i'm still on the fence there i think i might i might pick it up uh you're playing scarlet is that right rich yep Mm -hmm. Mm. i might pick up violet my brother actually brought his switch over recently and let me run through the kind of overworld on the motorcycle pokemon yeah (laughs) it ran like absolute shit (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like it was so like, cool but uh they've got so much money that's that's the thing for me like i can't there's been so many good pokemon games and i could play any of them anytime i want so i can't justify to myself going out and supporting a new game that isn't like it, it's just not up to the standard of what pokemon was you know what i mean like we? They have everything in front of them. They have everything they need to make like a really cool Pokemon game. Yeah. Like, they don't even yeah. need to change the formula. Just, I don't know. And like you can see the, the ambition oozing out of out of these new games. But like for them to beef it on the technical side is what's weird. Like, like yeah. how, old, how old is Breath of the Wild at this point? And Dragon Quest XI echoes of an elusive age. Definitive edition. Definitive edition. For the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> but these huge, <laughs> these huge open world games that like are a couple years old now and they're running so well. Like those versions run better than the ones we have on. Like they ported the Switch version to PlayStation and Xbox for Dragon Quest Definitive Edition as Echoes of an Elusive Age for the Nintendo Switch. But they ported that to the PlayStation <laughs> stuff just because it was optimized so well and it runs perfectly why pokemon no work right if if i were to like just take a wild swing at it i wonder if like they dropped rcs at the beginning of the year as like a open world test and 
maybe the team didn't get enough time to develop it. Right. Well, um, that's gotta that's gotta be the problem. Like they, they there has to be issues around deadlines for Pokemon games at this point because now, like yeah. Pokemon games need to be churned out. Yep. It's it's getting into that Assassin's Creed territory. Yeah, they'll never be given the time or attention to really make an outstanding one. Yeah. Despite being the largest grossing media franchise in history. And it it's funny because honestly, up pretty high on my game of the year list is Vampire Survivors. Have you guys dabbled in this? Mm -mm. I have not, no. It's like a $2, like, 8-bit kind of game where you play with one hand, which is fantastic. So you're just, like, there's hordes of vampires, bats, ghouls, and various things. And you're just moving your character around, and you're picking up power-ups and stuff as you go on. And more enemies appear on the screen. But your character is constantly just automatically shooting out, like, a Castlevania-style whip or like magic missiles and stuff. And you just run around with one hand fighting waves and waves of enemies. And like, it's probably one of the best things that came out this year. It's widely addicting. It's on Game Pass if you're one of those people. That sounds like a lot of fun. It's a good game, but it's up there and Pokemon's not. (laughs) Though (laughs) though I think Arceus is is in there. That game was actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, This year, uh, I was really impressed by three games, mm-hmm. um, Sifu, Stray, and uh, TMNT. Oh, Shredder's Revenge, huh? Yeah, I, I absolutely loved Shredder's Revenge. Actually, if I could bucket Shredder's Revenge and the Cowabunga Collection together, I would, because the Cowabunga Collection is, it's the perfect, it's the perfect way to bundle all of those games together. It hits every note like not only can you play them all as they were originally intended Mm -hmm. you can play upscaled versions you have so much history packed into that game with the gallery images there's like development gallery images on games from the early like late 80s early 90s yeah it is the most worth it price point of a collection of games that i could just play on my computer yeah that sounds great just from like an archival perspective the fact yeah. that they have all of that stuff still on hand. Yeah. It's really impressive. And uh, so for uh, Sifu, that's a game where like you keep getting older but learn cool moves. So like you're sort of getting weaker but also stronger. Yeah. Like, um, although if you if you play it the way I did, you never really get stronger because I didn't want to age. <laughs> I, I turned it into the Dark Souls of fighting games. Oh, you, <laughs> just, you just stay young Wait, but get your ass kicked? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's our trigger yeah, well, word. That's, so that's I, how you act. <laughs> sorry. That's how you activate James and I. You say the Dark Souls of fighting games, and then we're there. We go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, do we still say the Dark Souls of things? I don't know if that's taboo now. Yeah, nothing's um, the Elden Ring of things yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like no. So I'm 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 James. You probably know this. Mm-hmm. I get real. I'm a trophy hunter. I I have a lot of trouble putting down a game until I've got the platinum. Oh my gosh. Um and for Sifu, there is a trophy for beating it under a certain age. Um so I essentially tried to play the entire game at the age you start at. What age do you start at? Just out of your <laughs> baby. <laughs> like what is it like twenty <laughs> something? Is it is it twenties or are you like eighteen? I can't remember. It's been a while since I played. So that's that's actually the only issue with Sifu for me. There's no real replayability after you do everything. But yeah, it was it was great. It was really it was really cool as a um, concept piece for an eventual John Wick game. Oh, mm. yeah. Except maybe, you know, Keanu Reeves doesn't age. So they could drop the aging mechanic and just throw more enemies at him. No, every time you quote unquote die, another dog gets shot. Oh, no. <laughs> That's some motivation to get good at it. Yeah, no one yeah. would ever want to lose <laughs> in the dark souls of john wick media (laughs) jesus and um stray was the dark souls of uh sad robot games Uh, i I love no steel rising was the dark souls of of sad robot games (laughs) okay googling steel rising (laughs) uh it's it's not good oh dang it i should i should okay i shouldn't say that it's not great it's good it's not great i was very disappointed because i wanted i wanted more Okay. I'm not gonna shit. I'm not gonna shit on the game. I enjoyed my time with it. It's fine. Put it away. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, I, 
I don't know. Do you guys have anything else to to plug? What's next for Square Table? Uh, I mean, just for now, more Elden Ring content. Uh, James, I know I hit you up about this like months ago, mm-hmm. but now that I'm finally set up, I want us to make our um, Elden Ring uh, best waifu tier lists. <laughs> I'll rate every single uh, absolute freak in, <laughs> <laughs> yep. in, the, in the Elden Ring world. Uh, yeah, the Finger yeah, Maidens who... are S tier. Um. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think those. I think those. Uh, I think the demi human queens might be up there. Oh, I think no. they might be at least B. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many horrible beasts in this world. I love it. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, uh. <laughs> hey, we'll collaborate on stuff. But uh, yeah, you can find us everywhere at Game Guys Advance. Yeah, we don't. We don't have outros either. <laughs> So we're all kind of trapped I mean, here I could, into one of us figures. I could, out I could, I could put on my, I could put on my Elden Lore uh, voice and come up with something for us. Oh my god! If you could, like, yeah, if you could count us out, that would be incredible. Thank you for joining us as we explored the thoughts of these three nerds. We hope you join us again next time for more Game Guys Advanced. <laughs>